What are the Nazca Lines? The Nazca Lines are monumental geoglyphs carved lightly into the earth in southern Peru. And were made by the Nazca culture between around 400 and 600 c. E. The lines form symbolic shapes, including animals, and natural and geometric forms. Such as a hummingbird, monkey, lizard, a flower, tree, and a spiral and trapezoid. These shapes, some of which are over 400 feet long, were made by removing a top layer of red pebbled earth to reveal a whiter surface underneath. Scholars wonder if the Nazca geoglyphs were depictions of constellations, or in some way linked to astronomy, but no conclusive connection has been found. It is possible the Nazca lines were an important part of religious ritual. Or were intended for a divine audience, as they are best seen from the air. How are Chinese characters formed? Rather than referring to sounds like the English alphabet, the letters of the Chinese alphabet refer to entire words or ideas. These are called characters, or calligraphs. Like Near Eastern cuneiform and Egyptian hieroglyphs. Some Chinese characters started out as pictographs, which means the character resembles what it depicts. The Chinese language is extremely visual in that the form of the language also denotes meaning. And this made a major impact on Chinese art throughout history. What was the purpose of Stonehenge? Like all other Neolithic art, lack of written records and other archaeological evidence makes it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to know exactly what sites like Stonehenge were used for. The theories about Stonehenge are wide-ranging, and some are more plausible than others. Much has been made of Stonehenge's possible religious significance including the idea that it may have been used for human and animal sacrifices. And though cremated human remains have been found, this suggestion has fallen out of favor. A complete skeleton was unearthed at Stonehenge. It was the body of a man who had been shot through the chest with arrows. While this discovery does indicate violence, it does not necessarily suggest religious sacrifice. Some scholars, particularly a core group of astronomers, believe the purpose of Stonehenge is technological. They think the site served as a Neolithic observatory and was used to track the movements of the sun. An important function in a society reliant upon agriculture to survive. While Stonehenge is aligned to the summer solstice, this theory is also hotly debated. What are the plastered skulls of Jericho? The people of Neolithic Jericho buried their dead under the floors of their houses in a practice interpreted as a form of ancestor worship. 
while complete bodies were often buried. Sometimes the head was removed and carefully reconstructed using colored plaster. Red and black paint was used to mimic facial features and shells. Such as cowries, were used to create white eyes. The result was a lifelike representation of the deceased and the practice has been considered by some scholars to be one of the earliest examples of portrait making. Similar examples of plastered skulls have been found at other sites across the Near East. Is the Venus de Milo an example of ideal beauty and poise from the classical period? Or was she made during the more garish and later Hellenistic period? Many 19th century scholars were convinced that she was an example of classical. Sculpture due to stylistic similarities with the work of classical master Praxiteles. Modern art historians now think she was made around 150 BCE, which would place her firmly in the Hellenistic period. They also cite the erotic tension caused by the way in which her robes are just about to slip off of her half-nude figure as being more in line with Hellenistic taste. It is perhaps the mystery that surrounds the Venus de Milo that adds to her beauty and attraction. One might wonder if she would be half as engaging with both of her arms completely intact. What is the Raimondi Stila? The Raimondi Stila depicts a human-like jaguar deity and is an example of Chavin-style art from the Peruvian Andes in South America. The Chavin culture, considered a mother culture to later Peru, developed between 1500 and 300 BCE. And Chavin style art emphasized complex abstract patterns and featured animals such as jaguars and eagles. The jaguar creature carved on the Raimondi Stila is known as the Staff God. It is depicted wearing an elaborate headdress made from stacked, serpentine monster heads. This interweaving image emphasizes balance and symmetry in its abstract design. What is Neolithic art? The Neolithic period is the New Stone Age, which lasted from approximately 6000 B. C. E. until 2000 B.C., unlike their Paleolithic predecessors. Neolithic people were settled rather than migratory, domesticating plants and animals for the first time. The earliest evidence of Neolithic culture has been found in the Near East including the modern-day countries of Jordan, Syria, and Turkey. Examples of Neolithic art include clay pottery and monumental stone monuments. What is a menhir? In the Celtic language, men means stone and here means long. A translation of men here is therefore long stone. 
Menhirs were roughly shaped single stones likely of symbolic importance to the Neolithic people of Northern Europe who made them. An enormous arrangement of these stones, known as menhir alignments, was discovered at Karnak. In southern France, likely made around 3000 BCE, the Neolithic people of the area placed thousands of heavy menhirs in a series of rows nearly 4000 feet long. The exact purpose of the menhir alignments at Karnak remains a mystery. What is Tassili and Adger? Tassili and Adger is an approximately 7,000 year old in southeastern Algeria with thousands of rock paintings and engravings, one of the earliest and most impressive examples of rock art in Africa. During the time when many of the images were made, this section of the Sahara Desert was a grassy plain and the paintings include images of elephants, hippopotami, and giraffes. Later images depict men, women, and children gathered around small houses, cattle grazing nearby. As the Sahara dried over thousands of years, new animals appear in the rock art such as camels and horses introduced from nearby Egypt. Who was Praxiteles? Praxiteles was a Greek sculptor who worked in Athens during the 4th century B. CE and is considered to be one of the most important artists of the classical period. Along with sculptors Scopas and Lysippos. He is particularly well known for the Aphrodite of Nidus, made for the Greek city of Nidus around 350 BCE. It is thought to be the first time an artist produced a monumental female sculpture fully nude. It was common to depict the male nude, but the female form was traditionally clothed. The Aphrodite of Nidus demands to be admired, and from multiple viewpoints. Her flesh is soft and supple and her body is delicately off balance in the contraposto pose. With this work, Praxiteles set a new standard for depiction of the female nude. The work itself was so beautiful that the real goddess Aphrodite was said to have traveled. To Nidus and upon seeing the statue exclaimed, Where did Praxiteli see me naked? What is a cromlag? Translated from Celtic. The word cromlech means circular place and refers to a circle of standing stones. Cromlechs are either circular or semicircular arrangements of megaliths. There are many theories about the function of these large scale Neolithic sites, including the idea that they served some kind of religious function. However, like the menhir alignments in France, cromlechs remain a mystery. What is the ISE Shrine? The ISE Shrine is an important Shinto complex in Japan dedicated to the goddess Amaterasu. 
ancestor of the Japanese emperors. Known as the Way of the Gods. Shinto may be considered a religion or a philosophy and is indigenous to Japan. Water purification rituals and worship of animistic local. Deities known as Kami are fundamental aspects of Shinto. The ISE complex features a main shrine which has a thatched roof and is raised off the ground with wooden pilings. Made of unpainted cypress wood, the shrine style reflects natural simplicity. Historically, only members of the Japanese imperial family were allowed worship in ISC's interior sanctuary. Every 20 years, the main shrine is completely rebuilt on the site. An important political and religious ritual. Why did the Romans copy Greek sculpture? Much like today, a large art collection was an indication of wealth and status in ancient Rome. Greek art was held in high regard by the ever-expanding Romans who set about conquering the Mediterranean and coming home with art and treasure from across the land. Roman artists copied many marble and bronze statues in order to meet popular demand. Usually working in marble. Not all Roman sculptures were exact copies, however. Roman sculptors adapted Greek sculpture and updated it to match the tastes of the Roman art buying public. All in all, we are lucky the Romans did so much copying. Many original Greek bronzes were long ago melted down to make things such as weapons and armor. And therefore much of our knowledge of Greek art comes from Roman copies. Why did the Romans copy Greek sculpture? Much like today, a large art collection was an indication of wealth and status in ancient Rome. Greek art was held in high regard by the ever-expanding Romans who set about conquering the Mediterranean and coming home with art and treasure from across the land. Roman artists copied many marble and bronze statues in order to meet popular demand usually working in marble. Not all Roman sculptures were exact copies, however. Roman sculptors adapted Greek sculpture and updated it to match the tastes of the Roman art buying public. All in all, we are lucky the Romans did so much copying. Many original Greek bronzes were long ago melted down, to make things such as weapons and armor. And therefore much of our knowledge of Greek art comes from Roman copies. How does Roman architecture differ from Greek architecture? Greek and Roman architecture are together referred to as classical architecture. As they share many characteristics including an adherence to the classical Greek orders of architecture and a sense of symmetry and balance. But, there are some key differences. 
whereas the Greeks favored marble, the Romans invented concrete. And they relied on this key building material in much of their architecture. Romans also emphasized circular forms and made extensive use of the arch, vault, and dome in their building projects, unlike the post and lintel structure of Greek buildings. While Greek buildings tended to feature cramped interiors built on a more human scale, Roman buildings had dramatically high ceilings and were generally more flamboyant than their Greek counterparts. How does Roman architecture differ from Greek architecture? Greek and Roman architecture are together referred to as classical architecture. As they share many characteristics including an adherence to the classical Greek orders of architecture and a sense of symmetry and balance. But, there are some key differences. Whereas the Greeks favored marble, the Romans invented concrete. And they relied on this key building material in much of their architecture. Romans also emphasized circular forms and made extensive use of the arch, vault, and dome in their building projects, unlike the post and lintel structure of Greek buildings. While Greek buildings tended to feature cramped interiors built on a more human scale, Roman buildings had dramatically high ceilings and were generally more flamboyant than their Greek counterparts. What is the Pantheon? Topped with the widest dome on earth until the 19th century. The Pantheon is an important example of Roman architecture, built between 125 to 128 c. e. during the reign of Emperor Hadrian. The name Pantheon refers to the fact that the temple was dedicated to all of the Olympian gods, who the Romans worshipped as the Greeks had done. The Pantheon was originally built on a podium, like an Etruscan temple, but hundreds of years of development around the site now hide this. Along with the original stairs which led up the middle of the podium. The entrance portico features Corinthian columns and leads to an enormous rotunda. The walls of the rotunda are nearly 75 feet tall and 20 feet thick which support the enormous dome. At the apex of the dome is a 30-foot oculus, which means eye and allows natural sunlight, and sometimes rain, to pour into the interior of the Pantheon. Besides the engineering innovations needed to build such a wide dome, spanning 143 feet, the Pantheon is impressive because of its harmonious proportions and beautiful decorations. If the dome were doubled, it would form a sphere that fits perfectly within the interior space of the rotunda. The interior of the dome ceiling is decorated with a rose of sunken. Ornamental squares that create shifting shadows as the sun moves across the sky and light filters through the oculus. What is the Pantheon?
topped with the widest dome on Earth until the 19th century. The Pantheon is an important example of Roman architecture, built between 125 to 128 c. e. during the reign of Emperor Hadrian. The name Pantheon refers to the fact that the temple was dedicated to all of the Olympian gods, who the Romans worshipped as the Greeks had done. The Pantheon was originally built on a podium, like an Etruscan temple, but hundreds of years of development around the site now hide this. Along with the original stairs which led up the middle of the podium. The entrance portico features Corinthian columns and leads to an enormous rotunda. The walls of the rotunda are nearly 75 feet tall and 20 feet thick which support the enormous dome. At the apex of the dome is a 30-foot oculus, which means eye and allows natural sunlight and sometimes rain, to pour into the interior of the Pantheon. Besides the engineering innovations needed to build such a wide dome, spanning 143 feet, the Pantheon is impressive because of its harmonious proportions and beautiful decorations. If the dome were doubled, it would form a sphere that fits perfectly within the interior space of the rotunda. The interior of the dome ceiling is decorated with a rose of sunken. Ornamental squares that create shifting shadows as the sun moves across the sky and light filters through the oculus. What is the Colosseum? The Colosseum is an ancient Roman stadium designed to seat 50,000 spectators for events such as gladiator and animal fights. Romans even held mock sea battles here, and were able to flood the arena for such events. Built between 72 and 80 CE, it was the largest Roman amphitheater and was originally known as the Flavian Amphitheater. The original central arena was nearly 30,000 square feet. And the whole structure is more than 600 feet in diameter. The facade of the building was made of three levels of 80 arch arcades. A row of arches, plus an attic level, and supported six tiers of seats. Under the seats, Barrel vaulted corridors allowed for the passage of athletes and animals. Each of the three arcade levels is decorated according to a different architectural order, which become more complex as the building rises. The first floor utilizes the simple Tuscan order, while the second and third floor incorporate elements from the Ionic and Corinthian order respectively. The exterior had been faced with travertine, but this relatively expensive material has since been looted. What is the Colosseum? The Colosseum is an ancient Roman stadium designed to seat 50,000 spectators for events such as gladiator and animal fights. Romans even held mock sea battles here, and were able to flood the arena for such events. Built between 72 and 80 CE, it was the largest Roman amphitheater and was originally known as the Flavian Amphitheater. 
the original central arena was nearly 30,000 square feet. And the whole structure is more than 600 feet in diameter. The facade of the building was made of three levels of 80 arch arcades. A row of arches, plus an attic level, and supported six tiers of seats. Under the seats, barrel vaulted corridors allowed for the passage of athletes and animals. Each of the three arcade levels is decorated according to a different architectural order. Which become more complex as the building rises. The first floor utilizes the simple Tuscan order. While the second and third floor incorporate elements from the Ionic and Corinthian order, respectively. The exterior had been faced with travertin, but this relatively expensive material has since been looted. What is a triumphal arch? A triumphal arch is a large monumental structure in the shape of a freestanding arched passageway. They were used in ancient Rome to commemorate great military victories. The Arch of Titus, C81 CE and the Arch of Constantine, 312 to 315 CE, are two of the most famous examples of triumphal arches in Rome. Over 50 feet tall and made of marble and concrete. The Arch of Titus was constructed after Emperor Titus conquered the city of Jerusalem. Relief carvings on the interior of the structure show Roman soldiers proudly carrying home the spoils of war. Including a menorah taken from the Temple of Solomon. Built almost 300 years later, the Arch of Constantine celebrates. Emperor Constantine's defeat of Maxentius at the Battle of Mulvan Bridge. The event is important in Christian history as Constantine was said to have had a vision of a cross and heard the words. In this sign you shall conquer just before battle. Constantine's mother, Helen, was Christian. And Constantine ended legal persecutions of Christians in Rome in the Edict of Milan. The Arch of Constantine was made of partly recycled material, and incorporated relief decoration. From monuments dedicated to earlier rulers such as Marcus Aurelius, Trajan, and Hadrian. Triumphal arches continue to be used to mark important historic events and can be found in cities such as Paris, New York, and Moscow. What is a triumphal arch? A triumphal arch is a large monumental structure in the shape of a freestanding arched passageway. They were used in ancient Rome to commemorate great military victories. The Arch of Titus, C81 CE and the Arch of Constantine, 312 to 315 CE, are two of the most famous examples of triumphal arches in Rome. Over 50 feet tall and made of marble and concrete. The Arch of Titus was constructed after Emperor Titus conquered the city of Jerusalem. Relief carvings on the interior of the structure show Roman soldiers proudly carrying home the spoils of war. Including a menorah taken from the Temple of Solomon. 
built almost 300 years later, the Arch of Constantine celebrates. Emperor Constantine's defeat of Maxentius at the Battle of Mulvan Bridge The event is important in Christian history as Constantine was said to have had a vision of a cross and heard the words. In this sign you shall conquer just before battle. Constantine's mother, Helen, was Christian. And Constantine ended legal persecutions of Christians in Rome in the Edict of Milan. The Arch of Constantine was made of partly recycled material, and incorporated relief decoration. From monuments dedicated to earlier rulers such as Marcus Aurelius, Trajan, and Hadrian. Triumphal arches continue to be used to mark important historic events and can be found in cities such as Paris, New York, and Moscow. What is the orator? The orator is a life-size, bronze sculpture of Aulus Metellus. A Roman official from the time of the Roman Republic. Made in either the 1st or 2nd century BCE. The work depicts the authoritative politician addressing a crowd with his right arm raised. Wearing traditional leather boots and a toga, the portrait sculpture is part of a tradition of Roman realism known as Verism. Popular during the time of the Democratic Republic. Statues like this would have been placed on the tops of columns as a form of memorial. Where it would appear as if the figure was addressing the people below. What is the orator? The orator is a life-size, bronze sculpture of Aulus Metellus. A Roman official from the time of the Roman Republic. Made in either the 1st or 2nd century BCE. The work depicts the authoritative politician addressing a crowd with his right arm raised. Wearing traditional leather boots and a toga, the portrait sculpture is part of a tradition of Roman realism known as Verism. Popular during the time of the Democratic Republic. Statues like this would have been placed on the tops of columns as a form of memorial. Where it would appear as if the figure was addressing the people below. What is Roman Illusionism? The ancient Romans were known for their beautiful paintings. Which they used to decorate the interiors of domestic residences. These paintings often created the illusion of space, much like a theater backdrop. And featured elements such as faux architectural motifs and outdoor scenes. The Villa of Pifanius. Sinister in Italy has some of the most important surviving wall paintings from the Roman world. The villa was buried by volcanic ash when Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 BCE. Nearby Pompeii was also destroyed, and was excavated in the early 20th century. Many of the paintings here feature objects painted using the trompe l'oeil technique. Which means trick of the eye. 
For example, an image of a glass vase in the painting looks so real that it appears to exist in three-dimensional space. These illusionistic wall paintings were a status symbol. For the wealthy Romans who filled their villas with them. What is Roman illusionism? The ancient Romans were known for their beautiful paintings. Which they used to decorate the interiors of domestic residences. These paintings often created the illusion of space, much like a theater backdrop. And featured elements such as faux architectural motifs and outdoor scenes. The Villa of Pifanius. Sinister in Italy has some of the most important surviving wall paintings from the Roman world. The villa was buried by volcanic ash when Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 BCE. Nearby Pompeii was also destroyed, and was excavated in the early 20th century. Many of the paintings here feature objects painted using the trompe l'oeil technique. Which means trick of the eye. For example, an image of a glass vase in the painting looks so real that it appears to exist in three dimensional space. These illusionistic wall paintings were a status symbol for the wealthy Romans who filled their villas with them. How did Romans make their mosaics? Mosaics were very popular in ancient Rome and, like realistic wall paintings, were used extensively to decorate the floors of private homes and villas of the wealthy. At the heart of a Roman mosaic are tesserae, small pieces of glass and stone, often in a cube shape. The tesserae were pressed into cement, which was also used as a sort of grout in the spaces between the stones. Mosaic panels, called emblemata, were usually built off-site by the mosaic artist and then installed into a floor. Romans liked to copy famous paintings in mosaic form, which required very tiny pebbles in order to achieve the detail of a painting. A number of lost Greek paintings still exist in a Roman mosaic form. How did Romans make their mosaics? Mosaics were very popular in ancient Rome and, like realistic wall paintings, were used extensively to decorate the floors of private homes and villas of the wealthy. At the heart of a Roman mosaic are tesserae, small pieces of glass and stone, often in a cube shape. The tesserae were pressed into cement which was also used as a sort of grout in the spaces between the stones. Mosaic panels, called emblemata, were usually built off-site by the mosaic artist and then installed into a floor. Romans liked to copy famous paintings in mosaic form, which required very tiny pebbles in order to achieve the detail of a painting. 
a number of lost Greek paintings still exist in a Roman mosaic form. What is the classical pantheon? The ancient Greeks and Romans were polytheistic, which means that they believed in many gods. Each with different attributes and personalities, and collectively referred to as the Greek and Roman pantheon. The human-like classical gods and goddess were frequently depicted in ancient art. And temples were built in their honor. Greek name Roman name description Zeus Jupiter ruler of the gods, often depicted holding a lightning bolt. Reigns from Mount Olympus, Hera Juno wife of Zeus and goddess of marriage. Often jealous as Zeus had many affairs, Aphrodite Venus goddess of beauty, love, and sex, mother of Cupid. Known for frequent love affairs with gods and mortals, Apollo Apollo son of Zeus and twin brother to Artemis. God of the sun, music, archery, prophecy, and poetry, Athena Minerva patron goddess of Athens. Goddess of Wisdom, Weaving, and Art, Demeter Ceres Goddess of Fertility and Harvest, her daughter. Persephone, was kidnapped by Hades and taken to the underworld, Hades Pluto God of the Underworld. Ares Mars God of War, Hermes Mercury Messenger God, often depicted with a winged helmet. Artemis Diana Virgin Goddess of the Hunt and Wilderness, Poseidon Neptune God of the Sea, depicted carrying a trident. What is the classical pantheon? The ancient Greeks and Romans were polytheistic, which means that they believed in many gods. Each with different attributes and personalities, and collectively referred to as the Greek and Roman pantheon. The human-like classical gods and goddess were frequently depicted in ancient art. And temples were built in their honor. Greek name Roman name description Zeus Jupiter ruler of the gods, often depicted holding a lightning bolt. Reigns from Mount Olympus, Hera Juno wife of Zeus and goddess of marriage. Often jealous as Zeus had many affairs, Aphrodite Venus goddess of beauty, love, and sex, mother of Cupid. Known for frequent love affairs with gods and mortals, Apollo Apollo son of Zeus and twin brother to Artemis. God of the sun, music, archery, prophecy, and poetry, Athena Minerva patron goddess of Athens. Goddess of wisdom, weaving, and art, Demeter Ceres goddess of fertility and harvest, her daughter. Persephone, was kidnapped by Hades and taken to the underworld, Hades Pluto God of the Underworld. Ares Mars God of War, Hermes Mercury Messenger God, often depicted with a winged helmet. Artemis Diana Virgin Goddess of the Hunt and Wilderness, Poseidon Neptune God of the Sea, depicted carrying a trident. What does the earliest Jewish and Christian art look like? Most of the earliest Jewish and Christian art dates from the Hellenistic period. And takes its cues from Near Eastern and Classical, Greek and Roman, art. 
early Jewish artists were forbidden from making any form that could be worshipped as an idol. And therefore avoided representational art. Early Christian art drew its symbols from Jewish tradition as well as classical tradition. A common subject in early Christian art, for example, is the Good Shepherd. In the classical tradition, the Good Shepherd represents the mythological figure. Orpheus, who is shown holding a sheep around his shoulders. Early Christian artists used this as a model for early images of Christ in both sculptural and painted form. Referring to Psalm 23 which states, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I lack, Psalm 23 colon 1. This is an example of syncretism, an art historical term which refers to the merging of meaning and imagery between different cultures and religions. What does the earliest Jewish and Christian art look like? Most of the earliest Jewish and Christian art dates from the Hellenistic period and takes its cues from Near Eastern and Classical, Greek and Roman, art. Early Jewish artists were forbidden from making any form that could be worshipped as an idol and therefore avoided representational art. Early Christian art drew its symbols from Jewish tradition as well as classical tradition. A common subject in early Christian art, for example, is the Good Shepherd. In the classical tradition, the Good Shepherd represents the mythological figure. Orpheus, who is shown holding a sheep around his shoulders. Early Christian artists used this as a model for early images of Christ in both sculptural and painted form. Referring to Psalm 23 which states, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I lack, Psalm 23 colon 1. This is an example of syncretism, an art historical term which refers to the merging of meaning and imagery between different cultures and religions. What are important symbols in Jewish iconography? Though idols are forbidden in the Jewish tradition, some images are frequently repeated. Especially in the decoration of synagogues and the Jewish holy book, the Torah. Scenes from Jewish history, including the story of Moses, were common choices for synagogues, and can be seen in the decoration of Dura Europo. Important Jewish symbols include the following, Menorah sacred. Seven branched candelabrum shofar a ram's horn used like a trumpet during ceremonies. Etrog citrus fruit used to celebrate Sukkot. A harvest festival lulave palm branch also associated with Sukkot in a 6th century synagogue located in ancient Menois. In modern day Israel, the floors are decorated with Roman style mosaics which feature the traditional Jewish symbols mentioned above, along with stylized birds, plants, and animals, which are thought to represent Earth's bounty and the unity of the Jewish people. What are important symbols in Jewish iconography?
Though idols are forbidden in the Jewish tradition, some images are frequently repeated. Especially in the decoration of synagogues and the Jewish holy book, the Torah. Scenes from Jewish history, including the story of Moses. Were common choices for synagogues, and can be seen in the decoration of Dura Europo. Important Jewish symbols include the following, Menorah A Sacred. Seven-branched candelabrum shofar a ram's horn used like a trumpet during ceremonies atrox citrus fruit used to celebrate Sukkot. A harvest festival lulav a palm branch also associated with Sukkot in a 6th century synagogue located in ancient Manois. In modern-day Israel, the floors are decorated with Roman-style mosaics. Which feature the traditional Jewish symbols mentioned above, along with stylized birds, plants, and animals, which are thought to represent Earth's bounty and the unity of the Jewish people. What was Dura Europo? Dura Europo was an ancient trading town established in the 3rd century BCE and abandoned by 256 CE in modern day Syria. After being long forgotten, the settlement was rediscovered by British soldiers in the early 20th century. The site features Greco Roman temples dedicated to Greek gods such as Zeus and Artemis as well as temples decorated with images of ancient Near Eastern deities such as the Persian god Mitras, and a variation on the Sumerian moon goddess, Nana. Also found here was one of the earliest known Jewish synagogues and a Christian house church. Both early Christians and early Jews built their churches and synagogues in private houses. The Dura Europo synagogue was large and richly decorated with interior wall paintings. Emphasizing green and yellow color schemes, and featured a niche for Torah scrolls. The house church was built in 246 CE and contained one of the earliest known baptismal fonts. The walls were decorated with images from both the Old and New Testament including an image of Christ walking on water. The Dura Europo site preserves evidence of a rich melting pot of ancient cultures and gives scholars insights into the visual culture of early Jews and Christians of the ancient world. What was Dura Europo? Dura Europo was an ancient trading town established in the 3rd century B. CE and abandoned by 256 CE in modern day Syria. After being long forgotten, the settlement was rediscovered by British soldiers in the early 20th century. The site features Greco Roman temples dedicated to Greek gods such as Zeus and Artemis as well as temples decorated with images of ancient Near Eastern deities such as the Persian god Mitras, and a variation on the Sumerian moon goddess, Nana. Also found here was one of the earliest known Jewish synagogues and a Christian house church. Both early Christians and early Jews built their churches and synagogues in private houses. The Dura Europo synagogue was large and richly decorated with interior wall paintings. 
emphasizing green and yellow color schemes, and featured a niche for tourist scrolls. The house church was built in 246 CE and contained one of the earliest known baptismal fonts. The walls were decorated with images from both the Old and New Testament. Including an image of Christ walking on water. The Dura Europo site preserves evidence of a rich melting pot of ancient cultures and gives. Scholars' insights into the visual culture of early Jews and Christians of the ancient world. What is the Ionic Order? The Ionic Order is the second of the three classical Greek architectural. Orders and is characterized by a longer, leaner column than the Doric order. Ionic columns were built with a ratio of approximately 9 colon 1 and the capital at the top of the column is 46 shaped like an unfurling scroll, which is called a volut. The Temple of Athena Nike located on the Acropolis in Athens and built between 427 and 424 BCE, is an example of an Ionic temple. This small building was only about 27 by 19 feet and it was completely demolished by invading Turks during the 17th century, though it was later rebuilt. The temple is famous for its two porches on each end. And for a surviving fragment of relief sculpture known as Athena Nike adjusting her sandal. This elegant image shows the goddess wearing a long, flowing robe which clings gently to her body as she bends to adjust her shoe. Her robe slips off of one shoulder and she appears momentarily vulnerable. A delicate and erotic image of the goddess. How did Romans make their mosaics? Mosaics were very popular in ancient Rome and, like realistic wall paintings, were used extensively to decorate the floors of private homes and villas of the wealthy. At the heart of a Roman mosaic are tesserae, small pieces of glass and stone, often in a cube shape. The tesserae were pressed into cement which was also used as a sort of grout in the spaces between the stones. Mosaic panels, called emblemata, were usually built off-site by the mosaic artist and then installed into a floor. Romans liked to copy famous paintings in mosaic form, which required very tiny pebbles in order to achieve the detail of a painting. A number of lost Greek paintings still exist in a Roman mosaic form. What is the classical pantheon? The ancient Greeks and Romans were polytheistic which means that they believed in many gods. Each with different attributes and personalities, and collectively referred to as the Greek and Roman pantheon. The human-like classical gods and goddess were frequently depicted in ancient art. And temples were built in their honor. 
Greek name Roman name description Zeus Jupiter ruler of the gods, often depicted holding a lightning bolt. Reigns from Mount Olympus, Hera Juno wife of Zeus and goddess of marriage. Often jealous as Zeus had many affairs, Aphrodite Venus goddess of beauty, love, and sex, mother of Cupid. Known for frequent love affairs with gods and mortals, Apollo Apollo son of Zeus and twin brother to Artemis. God of the sun, music, archery, prophecy, and poetry, Athena Minerva patron goddess of Athens. Goddess of wisdom, weaving, and art, Demeter Ceres goddess of fertility and harvest, her daughter. Persephone, was kidnapped by Hades and taken to the underworld, Hades Pluto god of the underworld. Ares Mars god of war, Hermes Mercury messenger god, often depicted with a winged helmet. Artemis Diana virgin goddess of the hunt and wilderness, Poseidon Neptune god of the sea, depicted carrying a trident. How does Roman architecture differ from Greek architecture? Greek and Roman architecture are together referred to as classical architecture. As they share many characteristics including an adherence to the classical Greek orders of architecture and a sense of symmetry and balance. But, there are some key differences. Whereas the Greeks favored marble, the Romans invented concrete and they relied on this key building material in much of their architecture. Romans also emphasized circular forms and made extensive use of the arch, vault, and dome in their building projects, unlike the post and lintel structure of Greek buildings. While Greek buildings tended to feature cramped interiors built on a more human scale, Roman buildings had dramatically high ceilings and were generally more flamboyant than their Greek counterparts. What is Cycladic Sculpture? The Cycladic Culture, c. 3000 to 1200 BCE, is known for its ceramic figurines. Cycladic artisans made their pieces out of various materials, from poor quality clay to marble, and represented humans, animals, and other forms. Some of the most well-known Cycladic sculptures are of women. These pieces can range in size and are highly abstract and stylized. The surfaces are smooth with little carved detail facial. Features and other details would have been painted. In many examples, a figurine's only facial feature is a nose. While arms are crossed over the chest, as if the figure is either asleep or dead. One side of the figure is flat and the toes are pointed. An indication that the piece was meant to lie on its back. In fact, many of these sculptures have been found near graves. Raising the possibility that they served a funerary purpose, though their exact function is unknown. What is the archaic smile? T. 
take a good look at an archaic kuras or kora sculpture and you may notice a subtle yet light-hearted smile playing on its lips. The close-lipped archaic smile gives cold stone sculptures a sense of warmth and life. Over 6 feet tall, the Berlin Kora, 570 to 560 BCE, has remnants of red paint and depicts a poised, column-like woman. Her robes fall rigidly and the folds in the fabric look almost like the fluting of a Doric column. She also holds a pomegranate, which therefore links her to the mythological deity Persephone. Who was abducted by Hades and taken to the underworld as his wife. Contrasting the otherwise stoic austerity of the work. The Berlin Kora features a warm archaic smile, which brings her to life. Who was Exequias? Greek vases from the classical period feature some of the most impressive paintings in the ancient world. And Exequias is considered to be one of the greatest vase painters of the time. Living in Athens during the 6th century BCE, Exequias painted in what is known as the black figure style, which places black figures on a red background. His work is noted for its grace and sense of order. One of his most famous pieces depicts Achilles and Ajax playing drafts. From c. 530 BCE, the scene takes place during a break in fighting during the Trojan War when the mythological warriors pause to play a game of ancient checkers. The scene is very symmetrical and the arrangement of figures takes into account the swelling form of the vase itself. Exequias not only painted the vase, but he was also the potter. A signature on the piece reads, Exequias painted me and made me. What is cuneiform? Cuneiform is the first system of written language, invented by the Sumerians around 3100 B. C. It was originally pictographic. This means, for example, that a bull's head would represent a bull. Over time, cuneiform evolved into a more abstract system of signs consisting of wedge-shaped lines pressed into clay tablets with a pointed tool called a stylus. Cuneiform was used to keep track of business records in cities like Uruk, in modern-day Iraq. Cuneiform tablets have withstood the test of time and offer scholars a wonderful window into the culture of the ancient Near East. What happened to the work of Ace? In April of 2003, the work of Ace was stolen from the Iraq Museum in Baghdad. During the civil unrest that followed the U.S. invasion of the country, it was a devastating loss for art history, and especially the people of Iraq, for whom the vase represents an important part of their cultural heritage. Fortunately, 
the vase was returned a few months later, though it was badly damaged. What are the classical Greek orders of architecture? Greek architects followed fairly strict conventions when designing temples in an attempt to produce a balanced and unified look, an aesthetic valued by the Greeks. The three main orders, or patterns of temple building design are, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. Referred to as the classical Greek orders of architecture. These systems of proportion and style made a profound impact on the history of architecture and continue to be incorporated into building design to this day. What is the Ishtar Gate? The Ishtar Gate was a Neo-Babylonian, double-arched gateway with four towers. Each featuring notched walls known as crenellations. The Ishtar Gate was originally over 40 feet tall, and the towers rose to nearly 100 feet. The deep blue brick structure was decorated with stylized lions and palm trees an impressive fortification indeed. The monumental gate mirrored the wealth and extravagance of other Babylonian structures such as the Hanging Gardens, which was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. A reconstruction of the Ishtar Gate has been installed in a museum in Berlin, Germany. What is the steel of Hammurabi? Hammurabi was a Babylonian king who ruled over the lands of Mesopotamia during the 2nd millennium B. C. He is famous for his code of laws, the earliest known legal code. The code itself is carved into a 7-foot steel, a large slab of black diorite. And in it Hammurabi declares that his code will cause justice to prevail in the land and to destroy the wicked and the evil. That the strong might not oppress the weak nor the weak the strong, as quoted in Stockstad 38. At the top of the steel, above the written code, is a carving that depicts Hammurabi himself standing before the sun god Shamash. Shamash, who was also the Babylonian god of justice, is seated in his throne and is surrounded by symbols of power. He rests his feet on a mountain top, wears a long, elaborate robe, and offers a rod and rope circle in his hands. Hammurabi's arms are crossed respectfully in front of him and he receives the laws as given to him by Shamash. The steel serves as a powerful marker of Hammurabi's high status and represents the divine inspiration of his code. What is a kuros? Kuros, plural kuroi, is a term used to refer to a freestanding sculpture of a young male during the archaic period of ancient Greek art. 
a female equivalent is known as a kore, plural kore. These statues were usually life-size and influenced by Egyptian sculpture. A kuros faces frontally and takes a small step forward, much like the sculpture of Menkor and a queen. The arms are held firmly at the sides and the hair is formed in long rows of stylized braids. Unlike Egyptian sculptures, male kuroa were completely nude and emphasized youth and athleticism. What does the earliest Jewish and Christian art look like? Most of the earliest Jewish and Christian art dates from the Hellenistic period and takes its cues from Near Eastern and Classical, Greek and Roman, art. Early Jewish artists were forbidden from making any form that could be worshipped as an idol and therefore avoided representational art. Early Christian art drew its symbols from Jewish tradition as well as classical tradition. A common subject in early Christian art, for example, is the Good Shepherd. In the classical tradition, the Good Shepherd represents the mythological figure. Orpheus, who is shown holding a sheep around his shoulders. Early Christian artists used this as a model for early images of Christ in both sculptural and painted form. Referring to Psalm 23 which states, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I lack, Psalm 23 colon 1. This is an example of syncretism, an art historical term which refers to the merging of meaning and imagery between different cultures and religions. What is Hinduism? With its roots in the culture of the Indus Valley, Hinduism is not a monolithic religion. But a name that encompasses diverse groups who worship many different gods and goddesses with multifaceted attributes. One major unifying element of Hinduism is adherence to the Vedas. Ancient works of literature that serve as the foundation of the Hindu religion. What is a ziggurat? A ziggurat is a mountain-like structure formed by a series of steps and topped with a temple or a shrine. Placing shrines and temples at a higher elevation served both practical and religious purposes. Practically speaking, the higher elevation would protect the religious structure from flooding or attack. It also served to glorify the ruler and the gods worshipped at the site. Ziggurats represented a place where heaven and earth met. The ruins of the White Temple at Uruk are located in what is now known as Warka, Iraq. This temple was part of a ziggurat dedicated to the Sumerian god Anu and housed statues of gods, goddesses, and temple patrons. It was oriented along the points of the compass and had a central chamber with an altar for religious rituals. Why did the Romans copy Greek sculpture?
Much like today, a large art collection was an indication of wealth and status in ancient Rome. Greek art was held in high regard by the ever-expanding Romans who set about conquering the Mediterranean and coming home with art and treasure from across the land. Roman artists copied many marble and bronze statues in order to meet popular demand. Usually working in marble. Not all Roman sculptures were exact copies, however. Roman sculptors adapted Greek sculpture and updated it to match the tastes of the Roman art buying public. All in all, we are lucky the Romans did so much copying. Many original Greek bronzes were long ago melted down, to make things such as weapons and armor. And therefore much of our knowledge of Greek art comes from Roman copies. What is the Corinthian order? The Corinthian order was the last of the three classical Greek orders of architecture to develop. The tallest and most elaborate of the three orders, a Corinthian column is built at a ratio of approximately 13 colon 1. Which means the height of the column is 13 times taller than the width. Originally designed for interior use. The Corinthian order features a capital decorated with flowers and leaves of the acanthus plant. While the Doric and Ionic order feature a cornice entablature, the Corinthian entablature is flat. According to the Roman architect and writer Vitruvius, and later repeated by the Renaissance writer Vasari. The artist and poet Callimachus was inspired to design the Corinthian capital after seeing a basket of overgrown acanthus leaves placed in front of a young girl's grave in the Greek city-state of Corneth. The Temple of Olympian Zeus is a Hellenistic temple that was started using the Doric order, but finished years later using the Corinthian order. The temple's massive columns are over 55 feet high. Classically inspired modern buildings continue to incorporate the Corinthian design. Including the General Post Office in New York and the U.S. Capitol Building. What is the Colosseum? The Colosseum is an ancient Roman stadium designed to seat 50,000 spectators for events such as gladiator and animal fights. Romans even held mock sea battles here, and were able to flood the arena for such events. Built between 72 and 80 CE, it was the largest Roman amphitheater and was originally known as the Flavian Amphitheater. The original central arena was nearly 30,000 square feet. And the whole structure is more than 600 feet in diameter. The facade of the building was made of three levels of 80 arch arcades. A row of arches, plus an attic level, and supported six tiers of seats. Under the seats, Barrel vaulted corridors allowed for the passage of athletes and animals. Each of the three arcade levels is decorated according to a different architectural order, which become more complex as the building rises. The first floor utilizes the simple Tuscan order, 
while the second and third floor incorporate elements from the Ionic and Corinthian order, respectively. The exterior had been faced with travertine, but this relatively expensive material has since been looted. What are important symbols in Jewish iconography? Though idols are forbidden in the Jewish tradition, some images are frequently repeated. Especially in the decoration of synagogues and the Jewish holy book, the Torah. Scenes from Jewish history, including the story of Moses, were common choices for synagogues, and can be seen in the decoration of Dura Europo. Important Jewish symbols include the following, Menorah A Sacred, Seven-branched candelabrum shofar A ram's horn used like a trumpet during ceremonies Etrog citrus fruit used to celebrate Sukkot, A harvest festival Lulav A palm branch also associated with Sukkot in a 6th century synagogue located in ancient Manois. In modern-day Israel, the floors are decorated with Roman-style mosaics, which feature the traditional Jewish symbols mentioned above, along with stylized birds, plants, and animals, which are thought to represent Earth's bounty and the unity of the Jewish people. What is the work of Ace? Also known as the carved vase of Uruk, the work of Ace is a three foot tall alabaster vase found by archaeologists near the White Temple. The vase is decorated with stories that have been divided into registers, or bands. Almost like a comic strip that tells a story of humans making offerings to the gods. The lowest register depicts the natural world of water. And plants while above this are domesticated animals. The middle register features nude men holding baskets. And the top register shows a king giving an offering to the Sumerian goddess Inanna. The figures in the registers are shown with their heads and legs in profile view. But with torsos and shoulders in a three-quarter view. <laughs>